G'day. I'm in the kitchen. It usually means one or two things, and one of those things is extract brewing. Uh, I apologise to a lot of my viewers that asked me to do extract videos, and I don't get around to doing many of them. But uh, I just got some good, great news that uh, Kegeland is stocking muttons. Now, I haven't tried muttons before, but I've heard really good stuff about them. They're supposed to be great kits. Uh, what have we got here? We've got a few. Um, oat ale. That actually comes with oat chips in it. Fancy. <laughs> Old Conquerwood Black Ale. Matt Brown Ale. Heavy Ale. Lager. And the best bitter. The other thing that's really cool is they actually have Maris Otter extract. Over the years, a lot of people have asked which extract to use to mimic Mar uh, Maris Otter in their extract beers, and we haven't really had much, you know, you just have to say use just a normal white dry malt. We haven't really had much choice unless you really went searching. But, so that's really good. Now you can add that to your kit to beef up a normal kit, or you can make your beer from scratch from it. Put that with some water and boil up some hops. Make your own beer from scratch, and that's what I might do with that. Today's brew is going to be the black ale, Old Concord Black Ale. I am going to do it to the instructions of the kit, more or less. I'm not going to steep any grains, I'm not going to add any hops. So I'll have a look what else is in this kit, because I haven't had a look yet. Instructions, uh, pretty simple. That's actually the instructions for... Four different ones. They must have a American style IPA, a Belgian style ale. I'm not sure whether they're available at Kegland. I'm assuming they probably will be if they're not already. And oh, unmarked tins. I wasn't expecting that. Oh well, you get two tins of goo. So let's get this in. This won't take long at all. Be a nice quick brew. First things first, I don't need to show you how to sanitize a fermenter. Uh, you can see some of my other videos if you need to do that. Make sure you're fermenter sanitised, give it a shake, ready to go. And the other thing we need to do with this kit really is warm these up a bit. I'll fill the sink up with some hot water and just soak these in the sink for 10 minutes just to loosen them up and make them easier to pour. And a mixing spoon, nice and clean and one you can sanitise and a can opener. Uh, I usually have a dedicated can opener just for brewing that I clean and keep it nice and clean so it doesn't get used for dog food or cat food and things like that. But uh, as long as it's clean and sanitized, you'll be fine. The instructions suggested 3.5 liters of boiling to hot, you know, hot water. I'm just gonna use a jug's worth. Um, I think that'll be plenty because I usually overshoot the temps anyway once I start using about three liters of hot water. So I'm just going to start with a jug, that's about 2 litres, just a little bit under, and uh, we should be able to mix everything into that fine. So I'll move the camera over, let's do it. Just before I pour my hot water into the fermenter, I'm going to grab the tins out of the sink that have been sitting in the hot water, which are just here, and I'm just going to dry them off. Like, you'll probably be fine, but you might not want that water dripping in to your fermenter. Smells good. Place this somewhere clean. There goes my new two litres of boiling water. We don't steam up too much. Look at that treacle. <laughs> You can get a little bit more boiling water or hot water and put it in the can and rinse these out. Just 
stir around. Use a spoon if you like. And scrape out the sides too. Just get all of it out. Uh, excuse, that's the kettle boiling in the background so I can rinse these tins out a bit more with some more hot water. Sensational. Well, that jug is nearly boiled. It is a good idea to wear gloves to do this because, of course, that water is hot and these cans are very thin steel and they get hot. It might be stating the obvious, but I always forget to grab my gloves. So now I'm going to top it up to about 18 litres with cold water. We'll check the temperature and then before I fill it up to 23 litres we'll know whether to add more cold water or more hot water to try and get it to that 18, 19 degree mark. The yeast will still eat it even if you don't, but if you're inclined to take a reading, then you'll get a false reading. I don't tend to take too many readings with extract because it's, they're accurate. You, you know how much water you're putting in and you know how much extract you're putting in. You can just work it out yourself. But if you're inclined to, do it. All right, we'll take a temperature of that. I'm going the cheats way today and we're at 26 degrees so I'm going to add more cold water still a bit warm I could pack some ice around it the fermenter or a cold towel and a fan on it oh, it's 24 it's going down call me crazy I'm gonna run with it and I've decided since I'm going in warm I will just use one pack I don't care if it's a bit slow to take off this warmth will really help it take off fast if I double pack this, it's really going to take off. So, and these are very fresh. This has got a best before of uh, 2021. So all I've got to do now is put some sanitizer or vodka in the airlock. But I won't do that till I get this from entering position. You can't get much simpler than that. And it smells awesome. I hope it works out fine. 
Uh, ideally, you would put it in a fermenting fridge and you'd brew it at about, or ferment it at about 18, 19 degrees, probably 19 I'd go. I'm going to keep it very simple this one, because a lot of people haven't got fermenting fridges. I suggest you get one though when you can. I'm going to leave this out. I'm probably going to put it in the garage to try and get that temperature down. It's quite cold here at the moment. I'll check it tonight in a couple of hours. I'll check it again in the morning. If it starts to drop too far, I'll put a, I'll just put a heat belt on it. But as I said, I'm not going to put it in the fermenting fridge. Being old school, I'm just going to ferment it out in the open. It's a sort of good time of year to do it because it doesn't get too hot. It doesn't get too cold. I think this one might go off like a rocket. <laughs> if that yeast is good, it did say premium yeast on the packet of that one. Uh, it could blow out. I'm a bit scared of leaving the inside on the carpet. That's why it's going <laughs> in the garage. Now you can see why I, I was reluctant to add 3.5 litres of boiling water at the start. I would have been way over temp. It might be a different story in winter when the groundwater is really cold. But our groundwater is still quite warm here, it'd be probably over 20 degrees, and that's why I had the problem of getting it down. You can do what I used to do a lot, and that was uh, boil and chill some water. Oh, you don't even have to boil it really. Uh, put it in some Coke bottles, store it in the fridge the night before, and they have, you know, three or four of them. So you've got six litres or something like that, six to eight litres, and that can really help bring it down. And just for a little bit more detail, that was all up 3.6 litres of uh, liquid malt. And we should be getting around a 5% beer. And just a reminder, it's the old Conquerwood Black Ale. So a week to two weeks time, depending how the ferment goes, I think it's going to go quite fast at this temp. Um, we'll have it in the keg and we'll see how it tastes. I'll leave a link down below in the description so you can go and have a look at the extracts. Cheers. Thought I'd better do that properly. Cheers. This is the uh, Maiden Voyage Pale Ale from the, the double batch I did in the uh, Brazil 65 litre. A bloody good drop too. Cheers.